Hey there guys and welcome back to the channel for part number 33 of The Sims 3 Supernatural and quite possibly the worst thing that could possibly happen in the world to this family has happened. So some pretty, pretty heavy stuff happened at the end of the last part or rather after I ended the last part. So if you guys remember, we ended the last part off with all of the kids kind of getting themselves ready for the day, getting themselves ready to head on off to school and catch the bus and whatnot. And so they all went off to school and a couple of hours afterwards, Rosalie decided that she had a couple of errands that she needed to run. And so she was going to head into town, grab some groceries at the grocery store, and also pick up a couple of things for Ryan as far as like recipe books and everything go for his job. And while she was heading out there, she decided to, I guess, take the scenic route or something. And so she had to drive up and around past the high school in order to get to the grocery store and everything. And while she was doing so, she saw a little something something out of the corner of her eye. She saw Lilith over here and she was standing over in a baseball field across the street from the high school, skipping class and just everything that she wasn't supposed to basically. And so she saw her, but she also saw her talking to somebody over there. And so she quickly pulled into the parking lot of the school. She parked her car and she went across the street and kind of like, it hid behind a couple of bushes and everything so that she wouldn't be seen. And when she saw the person that Lilith was talking to, her blood immediately started to boil because she saw her younger sister talking to none other than her father, Vincent. And she couldn't actually hear what they were saying because she was far enough away to where she could only really hear the mumbling of their voices. But what was happening was Lilith was over there. She was skipping class, like I said. She was just, you know, hanging out by herself, doing whatever she wanted to do. And she noticed some strange guy coming up to her and like walking up to her like she was the only one there. So he was the only one that she, he could have been. Well, she was the only one that he could have been heading towards. And so she asked him like, hello, can I help you with something? And he looked at her. He looked at her right in the eye and he said, Lilith, I know this is going to be probably hard for you to understand and hard for you to accept, but I'm your father. I'm Vincent. I know that you've probably heard of me, but I, I am your father. And just almost immediately, she felt this connection towards him. And just by looking at him, she just knew like he, he is telling the truth like this. This is my dad. And so she went in to ask him, like, where have you been all my life? Like, how did you even know I was here? How did you know how to find me? And he, he went into talking about how you know, I haven't seen you since since you were a baby and the entire reason why I haven't seen you is because of is because of Eleanor, is because of my ex-wife and like I couldn't get close enough to you to have a relationship with you because of the family and this is the only time that I could to get close enough to you to actually have a conversation with you because you're like alone you're here alone so this was my time and ever since you were a baby I have known where you were like even when Eleanor wished you and the family off to Midnight Hollow I knew where you were I just have this connection to you and that just made her feel so incredibly at ease, you guys. Like, there was just something about him that she is drawn to. She has this connection to him. And so, like, because they were standing in the middle of, like, a sunny field, he had to leave because, obviously, he's a vampire. He would have, like, combusted if he would have stayed out there any longer. And so he gave her a hug and he told her, you know, if you ever need me for anything, if you ever need somebody to talk to, if you ever need somebody to just, you know, confide in, I will be there for you. And he gave her his number. Number, and within the blink of an eye, he was gone. And so you might be asking, well, how did he not see Rosalie then? Well, Rosalie, she just, she didn't even trust herself. Like she left a couple of minutes before he did because she didn't trust herself. Her blood was absolutely boiling at this point and she didn't trust herself. She figured, well, if I'm, t if I'm going to be staying here for any second longer, there's going to be nothing stopping me from going over there and just doing something that I'm going to regret. And with her being so far along, 
along in her pregnancy. She didn't want anything to happen to the baby either, which she's probably going to be getting birth in this part, just a little FYI. But yeah, so she left and she just kind of came home and she's been stewing in her anger and her rage ever since then. And so Lilith has just now gotten home from school and she is just yelling at her like, how could you do this? Like, you know the things that we have told you about him. Why would you even want to have any kind of relationship with him whatsoever? And so she is also going to insult her like she is going off on her sister right now and Lilith she just can't even believe the utter audacity of her sister so she's going to argue back at her and then she's also going to intimidate her a little bit like you know what I don't care what you have to say about him like the only things that you have ever told me about him is that he is this bad horrible person and all of this stuff that has happened between you and dad and mom Mom happened before I was even born. Like, how does that even pertain to me, my life, or my relationship with him? It's almost like you wanted him to be alienated from my life. And that in and of itself is absolutely selfish of you guys to do. And so she's just telling her that. And Rosalie just can't even believe just anything that's coming out of her sister's mouth right now like she can't even understand how she would want to have a relationship with him and so they're just absolutely disgusted with one another Rosalie is going to come upstairs she just can't even stand to be around her sister right now and so she is going to come over here and she is just going to She's just going to research on her alchemy station a little bit. And like Lilith, she just, oh my gosh, she is like so pissed right now. She can't even believe that ev that everything has gone down. Like this is stuff that she has been wanting to hear from her dad ever since she was a little kid. Like ever since before she can even remember, there has been this void in her life. And it is because she hasn't had her dad there in her life. And like now that she has met him and now that she has like spoken to him and the things that he said to her is stuff that she has wanted to hear like I said her entire life and now that she like now that she's actually met him she doesn't want to like be away from him she wants to have that connection with him and like after seeing everything that's gone down in this family you guys like as far as like okay so Lilith she is definitely a a observer. She is definitely more of a she like like I just said, she's an observer. Even when you don't think she knows a couple of things, she does and she watches and she just she she watches her family and she sees what they have been doing. And like with everything that has been going on with Lil not Lilith, but with Rosalie and Eleanor and Ryan with Ryan supposedly being like so in love with her sister and supposed to be married to her sister he's off flirting with his with her mother and then her mother trying to get it on with Aiden who is her brother's husband's dad the, like the entire bit of this family is just so dysfunctional and as crazy as it seems her dad at this point is the only thing that really makes sense to her and so she just she doesn't even want to be around her family right now she's just going to grab something quick to eat and she is just so livid right now she is upset she's humiliated she's just a whole lot she's just a whole lot of everything right now. And so after she grabs something to eat, I think she's actually going, she is going to call up her dad and she's, she's just going to text him. She's going to send him a friendly text. Like, I can't even be in this house right now. Can you please, 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 please just meet me over at your house? Because he also gave her his address. So she knows where he lives. And you guys, for the first time since Ryan's dad's death, we're going to see where where he where he lives and oh yeah I did actually have to move out Emily and it looks like her and her little high school sweetheart have been getting it on and everything which is quite nice but yeah I did have to move out Emily because I've actually already tried recording this part before and I was having this weird problem like I don't know if it was a glitch or something but like I went to send Lilith over to 
uh, Vincent's house to hang out with him. And all of a sudden, Sabella's like little portrait right here just completely disappeared. And I didn't know where she was. Like she was somewhere in the world, but I didn't know where exactly she was. I couldn't call her. I couldn't text her. There were no interactions to be had. There was no little like notification or anything saying that she had gotten taken away because that was like my first, that was my first instinct is that, well, maybe she got taken away by social services because of her grades were being so bad, but nope, that wasn't a thing either. And so Vincent actually lives right over here. This is where he has been in hiding ever since that whole thing happened. This little teeny tiny trailer out here in the middle of freaking nowhere. And it looks like he's just, you know, He's kind of hanging out over here. So we're going to have her visit the McAshton household and she's going to pay a visit to her father. Hopefully he doesn't leave or anything. I love how his little cell phone is like just hovering over there. But yeah, Sabella was like completely gone. And so I just moved out Emily. So, so now we have like eight Sims in the household and we are going to be having another Sim in the household at another point in time, like after... Uh, after Rosalie gets done, well, gives birth and everything. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully nothing too bad happens. Hopefully no Sims like decide to <laughs> just, just decide to up and vanish again. But yeah, so she's going to head over and she's going to hang out with her dad for a little bit because her family is just completely like for lack of better words, her family is pissing her off. And so she just doesn't want to be around them right now. I don't even know if she has to go to work today. No, she doesn't. Okay. So that's good. We're not going to be missing. Uh, we're not going to be missing school or anything. So that's good. What the hell is that? <laughs> oh my God. There was like a little werewolf, like carrying a child or something. That was creepy. That was a little creepy, <laughs> but yeah, so here we are. And she might actually ask him to like stay the night or something. Like she just doesn't even want to go home, but it looks like he is still here and he's like, apparently really hot or something. He's just chilling in this little sunroom right here. So yeah, it's just so surreal to actually have Vincent kind of back in the picture. And it looks like he was like trying to go to sleep or something. Yeah. You need to wake up, honey, because I'm here. I'm trying to see you like visit the McAshton household, please. Like if I have to, I will just open this place up myself. You know what? I think I will. I think I will. <laughs> so we're just going to go in and we're just going to open this house. Yep, there we go. Now I don't have to wait for him. <laughs> but yeah, so this is the house that he has been living in. It's very, very tiny. It's very not as luxurious as the old McAshton Manor, I guess you can call it. Like when we very first started out this Let's Play. But I mean, it's been working for him pretty decently. And so we're just going to come in and we are going to chat with him a little bit and just hang out with him. And so... Eleanor, or not Eleanor, Rosalie, she's still at home. She's just researching her alchemy. She's still super pissed and everything. And I just can't wait until she gives birth to this baby because like with everything that's happening with the whole Vincent situation again, I think the baby would be pretty good for her to help like keep her mind off of it. And so she's just, you know, telling her dad, like I got home and I just couldn't even stand to be there anymore. Like Rosalie, she started yelling at me saying that I shouldn't even be around you. And he's just like, yeah, that, that is something that I would expect from, from them. Like they just absolutely hate me. And she like, Lilith at this point she just honestly has it in her mind because her dad has been nothing but nice to her recently and we know like we know how much of a snake he could really be but you know Lilith she doesn't actually know that she's never had a real bad I guess encounter with Vincent or anything so Honestly, I think that Lilith is just being brainwashed by Vincent. Like, tell me what you guys think about this whole situation. How is this going to pertain to, like, Rosalie and Eleanor and everything? Let's go ahead. We're going to give him a hug. That's what we're going to do. We're going to give him a little hug over here. And then let's see here. We can, can we possibly, like, watch a movie with him? We're going to admire him. That's what we're going to do. Like, we're, we're going to admire him. Like, thank you. Thank you for coming back into my life when you did, because I, I honestly don't know. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't have come up and talked to me. So we are going to gossip with him a little bit. We're also going to enthuse about music. There we go, because she is really, really, really into music. And then maybe we can, like, watch a movie with him over here in the living room. I don't know if we would actually be able to... Um, he might have to go to work here pretty soon. Have you heard Emily Van Gold has been flirting with Bradley? Aw. Awesome. All right. So let's come over and let's sit. 
and hopefully we'll be able to like invite him over to watch a little bit of TV with us. Looks like he's trying to like make something to eat. So let's watch some TV. Oh, and he's, oh, I was about to say, it looks like he's coming over here, but nope, he's just coming over there. <laughs> uh, let's change, what is happening? Oh my goodness, it's Cerberus' birthday. <laughs> Okay, so Cerberus is aging up into a uh, into a bi a big doggo. Okay, so everybody just has to like steal the spotlight from somebody, you guys. Everybody just has to. So he's gonna be aging up, but ow, I just bit bit my freaking tongue. Oh my god, ow, that hurt. <laughs> but we're gonna come back over here and we are going to change this to action world. And we're going to see, okay, I was about to say, where's Vincent? He's like gone. Uh, we are going to invite him over. I guess we're going to invite him over to like chat or something. Or can we like invite him over to watch the, the, okay, ask to join to watch. There we go. All right, so Cerberus has just aged into an adult. So how big of a dog is he now that I think of it? After we get them like situated with watching some, watching some TV together, I'm going to head back over there to the house and just kind of see what all is going on over there. What are you doing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? Are you trying to go to his work or something? Um, yeah, he's going to work. Okay, so I guess we'll just let Lilith kind of chill here for however long she can. I think she's going to end up getting, like, booted out of the house at some point. But, yeah, she, she we'll let her just kind of do her own thing there. At least she got out of the house. So, yeah, Rosalie's just over here. She's researching her alchemy still. Like, when are you going to be giving birth, though? <laughs> like, when? I just don't want you. I have to go now. I think it's time you left also. Okay, yeah, Dad, sure. Whatever. No, we're not going to have her go home. We're going to have her... Let's see, where else can she go? Maybe she can, like, pay a visit to the library and do her homework there. I think that would be nice. Like, she just doesn't want to go home right now. <laughs> she really, really doesn't. And so, let's see, who all is here? We have BB, a tourist, and then we have another tourist. Okay, so, yeah, we're going to send her over, and she's just going to visit the library and do her homework. So that's what she's going to do. All right, so let's check out Cerberus and let's see what he looks like all grown up and everything. Um, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> he's adorable. Look at him. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Oh, he's adorable. My camera isn't wanting to work for me or something, but oh, I love his eyes. They're like two different colors. Oh, I love it. All right. So yeah, he's a, he's a big giant dog now. So <laughs> we're just gonna, we're just gonna let him do whatever he wants to do. And let's see here. How is Eleanor? You need some TLC, honey. What are you doing with your life? Let's get you to come over and grab something to eat. So have a quick meal of some plasma orange juice. And then she's also getting quite tired. Um, but yeah, another thing that we did in the last part was that we sent Eleanor and Aiden out on a bit of a date and they went out and just kind of like had a nice night. Ooh, did you get a, did you get a thing? Um, I think he got a promotion. Yeah, he has been promoted to vegetable slicer as well as a bonus of 384. Awesome. That's so cool. All right, but yeah, they went on a little bit of a date. They had a nice night together. And you guys were talking about how it's super friggin' weird how they're, like, together and everything, which I could totally understand. But, like, if they're able to be romantic with one another, then, like, I don't personally see a problem because if they weren't supposed to, well, if they weren't allowed, I guess you can say, to be romantic with each other, I don't think the game would allow it in general. And so, like, a lot of you guys are telling me that they shouldn't really get married or anything because that would probably mess up the relationship between Gregory and Tristan and everything. And I do agree with that. I wasn't actually planning on getting them married. I was just kind of having them do you know, whatever, whatever they wanted to do as if they, if their relationship doesn't get past dating, then I'm totally fine with that. I'm just putting that out there. But let's see here. I love watching the new lovebirds commented a looky loo after spying David Musgraven. What? Oh my God. She's like going for everybody at this point. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So let's see. Oh, he wants to woohoo with Tristan. Okay. So Gregory, what are you doing with your life? Oh, he's probably like super like yeah, he's like super scared of poor Bone Hilda, but I really wanted to get him into a job because I did have him quit the 
a bookstore job that he did have so that we can get him into like the writer career. And so I was having him work on his writing skill like all day today. And so let's see if we can get him to come down over here. We're just gonna use Sabella's room. So let's get him to um, job and profession. I think it's a profession, isn't it? No, it's a, I think it's a job or is it self-employed? I have no idea. Self-employed writer. Okay, so we're gonna have him do that. And let's see here. We have to, okay, so yeah, we have to earn 4,000. I think it was. Yeah, 4,000 in uh, book royalties. So we're going to have him sign up as a self-employed writer. And I think we have to go down to the city hall in order to, in order to kind of do that. So are you doing your homework? Did she even get her homework done? Um, yeah, she actually did. Okay, so I guess because it is like 1030 at night. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that. Because it is 1030 at night, she's gonna kind of head, head on home. And I guess she's just gonna go straight up to bed or something. She's not really hungry. Her needs are pretty decent. And so yeah, she's probably just gonna like head right on off to sleep. So let's have him come over and get his job. And then I don't know, you guys, maybe we can have him like, just in general, like, just, you know, browsing or something. Maybe we can have him look up the, um, like, kids for adoption, pretty much, is what I'm trying to say. Just to see what all is available. As, as weird as that sounds, like, that was probably a horrible way of wording it. <laughs> but yeah, he's gonna head down to the city hall, and let's see here. Let's like take care of everybody for a minute. So Aiden, he's downstairs sleeping. Eleanor is downstairs sleeping as well. Ryan is eating a green salad. Rosalie is still researching. You're doing that. You are playing. You need to grab something to eat. Lilith, she's about to head upstairs to not relax, to go ahead and head on off to sleep. And then Sabella, she also needs to go downstairs and grab something to eat. So let's have you eat leftover... Uh, go ahead and have some leftover apple pancakes. That sounds good to me. And let's see. Oh my goodness, you guys, the baby is coming. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I knew she was going to be giving birth in this part. I just knew it. Oh my gosh. Let me try and get a decent picture of this here. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's have you, Ryan, go ahead and take her to the hospital. Oh my gosh, and now that means that I have to look on the previous video. I have to look on the previous video and look and see what uh, what baby names you guys have left me. So let me go ahead and do that really quickly. It looks like my timer is about to go off pretty soon anyway. So this was like absolute perfect timing. So what is happening? What is happening? <gasps> oh, that that's... Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Is this... Okay, so I thought, okay, that's, that's Gregory. For a minute there, I thought that was Vince and I was gonna be like, oh, you have a lot of nerve showing your face here. But yeah, he's just gonna, he's just heading home and everything, probably gonna go to bed. So we might have to look up the whole adoption thing. Oh, geez, he's about to start freaking out and everything. <laughs> yeah, honey, just go ahead and go to bed. Um, but yeah, we might have to do the whole adoption thing tomorrow. So let me come over here into this video. And I always love how when you have the sim, well, the husband or whatever, take the wife to the hospital to give birth, it's always the wife that goes off and does the driving. What the hell? What is this? What was that? That was weird. That was like a weird freaking noise. You need to get out of my face, Scotty. <laughs> you need to get out of my face, okay? Um... Let's see here. What is that? What is that noise? Like, it's kind of creeping me out. What is that noise? I've never heard that before. Is something going on over here? I don't know. It's like this weird futuristic noise or something. <laughs> Was it the llama? I think it might have been the llama. I don't know. All right, so I'm just getting... Um, Hi, Tristan. This is David. Do you want to hang out? No, thanks. Um... All right, so I'm not really seeing any name suggestions on the last video, probably the video before that. I'm not too sure. So let me see here. Oh my gosh, I'm just so excited. I can't wait to see what it's going to be. I'm honestly hoping for a boy because then like, I feel like their family would be complete if they had a girl and a boy and then they could like stop 
trying for kids. I don't know if they'll stop trying for kids, like, after two, but, like, yeah, I don't, I don't know yet. I don't know if I want to, if I want them to have any more kids after this, but, um, let's see here. There's that noise again. Is it just part of the hospital? I think it might be. Oh, and it looks like they had another baby girl. That is so amazing. That is so amazing. Oh my God, there goes my timer. All right, so I'm gonna very quickly go ahead and look for a name suggestion and I will go ahead and be right back. All right, you guys. So the name that I decided to go ahead and go with was Blair. I absolutely adore that name and it is just so beautiful. So we have Sabella and we have Blair. And so she has given, well, she has been given the loves of the outdoors and brave traits. And so that is totally fine by me. Those are pretty decent traits. So that means, oh my goodness, we have Blair and she is probably a witch as well. Let me go ahead and check really fast. Yes, she also has her father's witchiness so that is just amazing all righty guys so i think on this lovely lovely note right here i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this part right here so i do want to thank you guys so very much for watching please don't forget to go ahead and leave me your comments down below telling me what you thought also go ahead and give me a big fat thumbs up if you did enjoy the video and if you are new don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well and i will talk to you guys in my very very next video all right, bye guys.